So this is the third time I've recorded this because twice I forgot to plug my microphone in and you couldn't hear anything even though it was pretty. So uh, I did a recording yesterday or the day before, two days ago, and it was really about um, how to do connect or set up a connection and develop on a Raspberry Pi Zero. So I have a couple Raspberry Pi Zeros that are embedded um, and I don't want to have to plug a monitor and keyboard in and a hub and like all this other crazy stuff for this embedded project. So what I decided I was going to do was use the USB gadget, Ethernet gadget, and that let me plug a USB cable from my PC into the single USB port on the Raspberry Pi Zero. And I can, and it looks like a network connection, so I can have as many SSH or other connections as I want into the Zero. And then the Zero is sitting on a Wi-Fi network, so if it needs access to the internet or something, it's actually got it through this Wi-Fi connection. And then that lets me set up the firewall in a way so that the Wi-Fi connection looks exact, firewall looks exactly the way I'm gonna want it when I deploy it. Um, and I left the firewall open for a USB connection. So I'm assuming that I have physical security um, and that somebody's gotta plug into it. And if they can't plug into it, then they can't come on. So all inbound connections are blocked to this. All right. so. I wanted to use Visual Studio Code Remote to do development, but Pi Zero is an ARM 6, and so you can't do that. Um, so I just pulled out a Raspberry Pi 3, and I have this old Google AIY voice hat thing, so I could try and do Google voice recognition. Um, and I decided and decided to play with that. So because I like this conf, uh, config with the wired so much, um, what I decided to do is I was going to make it where if I wanted the firewall to be wide open on the ethernet connection, which is probably not great. Um, and then the Wi-Fi is still locked down. So even though this thing's on my Wi-Fi network, anybody that got on the Wi-Fi wouldn't have access to the device through SSH. So I have all inbound blocks still. And then if I have motors and other things out here, they're all connected to the Pi. So uh, the simplest thing to do here is I, I downloaded my Google project AIY and used the Raspberry Imager, Raspberry Pi Imager for that. That, and then I eject the drive and I reinsert the drive and I run a PowerShell script. So I run this PowerShell script um, right here. And this one will configure that Pi so that I haven't booted it yet. The card's still in my PC. I write out the WPA supplicant file for my home network, my home office network. And, I, and we configure it for SSH. So that gives me SSH, but it's wide open um, because there's no way for me to run Linux commands on the SD card while it's plugged into my PC. And then I drop all the scripts on there that are in this project um, in case I want to do stuff. So the two I'm actually going to run are create a custom host name, which is it's going to change it from Raspberry Pi to Raspberry uh, to Pi dash whatever the serial number is on that host. Um, and then it, and then I lock down the firewall so that inbound on wireless is blocked and inbound on hardware isn't, and everything outbound is fine. And for inbound on hardware, it could either be a USB zero, uh, which would be like a either a gadget, or it could also be one of those um, mirroring cards, or mirroring cables they used to make that let you plug two together, it basically generated a network, USB, double-ended USB network. Okay, so I ran all that, um, and I'm sitting on my local machine looking at these scripts. What I'd like to do is test these on the remote device, right? So I want to test it out here, test the scripts. And I could do that over SSH connections, but even better, I can go and create a, um, a remote connection. So I'm gonna create a remote connection window. First thing I'm gonna do is uh, create a config file. And I'm gonna use the one, you know, so two locations. And this one just comes as a template. So what I've done is I've given it a name because it's gonna be my Google AIY project. And this is the, I, so I burned the SD, I booted the box, I ran the two scripts, firewalls up, host name has been set. It automatically comes up in a Bonjour style dynamic or DNS with a something.local. And in this case, it's the hostname.local. And I'm gonna use the default username here, which is a horrible idea, but I'm gonna do it anyway. Okay, because it's super simple. So if I uh, click on this and I decide I'm not gonna do WSL, then I'm gonna connect to a remote host. I am going to pick this AIY host. It always brings up another window. That is just one of those joyful things that it does. And I am going to make this a little smaller so you can see like it's trying to open the remote. The password is raspberry. 
All right, this tends to fail a lot in the first go. So I'm gonna look at the details of this. So we're remoted into that box and it is gonna download the server into my local directory in dot Visual Studio and unpack it. And then it's gonna use the connection, uh, that open network connection to basically talk to this remote server. So this thing's SSH'd in. Wow, that actually worked. Usually it fails on the first time. Um, but this time it looks like it might have worked. So let's see if we can. Um, all right. So I SSH'd in. I'm sorry. I connected over SSH using Visual Studio Code. It installed the remote server. So I'm going to close this and this. And then I'm going to go, hey, where are my files? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to clone a repo here. All right. So this is my Raspberry Pi scripts, the same one I showed you in the other window on my Windows machine. And I hit enter. And I want to put it in my home directory. So it's going to be slash home slash pi slash Raspberry Pi. And it's cloning it. And would I like to open the clone directory? Okay. So I don't have anything open right now. No folders, nothing. So it's purple. When I click this, it's going to open that as a directory. Yay. Oh, I got a log, but it's basically opening another Raspberry uh, uh, SSH connection. So my password is Raspberry. All right. So I'm sitting on my Windows machine connected to my Raspberry Pi. The remote server VS Code's installed, and I can see all the files out there and work with them. And I also have a terminal open. So this is a terminal on the Raspberry Pi, and this is me editing files on the Raspberry Pi. And that way I can do development on the Raspberry Pi while sitting on my machine with no HDMI, no video, and no keyboard on the Raspberry Pi itself. So that's it. I hope that was useful.